Uh, strangely enough, it started as a ukulele cover project, and I would mostly play Judas Priest and Ozzy Osbourne songs and shout at the audience a whole lot. I wouldn't play anything on the ukulele that should be played on the ukulele. That was my rule. Eventually, I got a looping pedal to try to fill out the sound a little bit more. It was a pretty good sound, but it was really boring to watch because it would take two minutes to set up all the different pieces of a song. I was lucky enough to have a conversation with Greg Gillis, who performs under the name Girl Talk, and he was telling me about how he creates music and that he has a sort of a computer program that runs everything on a loop, and he would just pull different pieces in and out of it. Uh, to create a sort of live mix and that that's how he did that and it just sort of clicked in my head and I just said Man, I wonder if I could do that with the looping pedal So I went right home and I just started playing a little song that I'd made up some just like two bar phrase and Did a little guitar solo over it and then I decided I'd had enough and I hit a race and I started playing something new immediately and then hit record immediately and then just started off in a new direction and I realized that I'd sort of seamlessly transitioned from one little riff to another riff and then I did it again and again and again and like 45 minutes later I basically made my own DJ mix. Being up there on stage improvising, I've always thought of it kind of like a game, Jenga, where it's just like you're pushing it farther and farther and farther, just like waiting to see if it will topple or fall apart, and it, I really like that about it. The good art is kind of like mischief. Like you, re you know you're really on to something when you're sort of looking over your shoulder, feeling like someone should be coming along to stop you at any second, and I always feel that way when I'm up on stage playing as Iconoplasty. <laughs> I would do this improvisational thing and over time I would find little riffs that I liked and then I would keep them and then I would sort of add them together and I would add them together and it sort of got longer and longer and longer and longer until it became one sort of almost album length composition and that composition is going to be the sort of core of this debut album that I'm working on. The album is a full-length LP, and uh, one side of it is one piece of music, it's side music, and it's just uh, all of those riffs that were born out of the improv act that flowed together to create one composition. And then the other side is a collection of all the songs that I'd never gotten around to recording, so it's side music and side songs. And part of the reason I did it that way is that, uh, you know, sometimes I go out and I busk on the street, and people are always walking up to me and they'll be like, oh, play this song, and I'm like, I don't play songs. They're like, no, play this song. I'm like, no, I don't play songs. I'm just playing music. It's different. You know, because to me, songs were always about this, like, you have this thing that you're doing, it's composed, it's structured, it follows a particular thing. Music, you're just simply seeing where it leads. And one of the things I like so much about Iconoplasty is that it was the first time I'd really explored just that pure music. I'd always been a songwriter. I'd always stuck very rigidly to the things that I created and the structures that I created for myself and didn't like to deviate too far out of them. I didn't even really like guitar songs very much. But this has really just been a complete, it's a blank slate every single time. You sit down, you turn it on, you turn up the volume, and you have no idea where it's going to lead. And that to me makes it the most exciting thing I've ever done.